Greetings. Let's talk about my neighbor Tortoro, uh, a uh, 1988 um, Japanese anime film by uh, Hayao Miyazaki. Um, another gorgeous film from the studio Studio Ghibli and Hayao Miyazaki, um, where um, a young family, uh, a uh, father and his two daughters are moving into a house in the countryside in what apparently this is now this part is from from uh from uh my uh, wikipedia thing of saying it's a post it's a it's a post um world war ii japan countryside where we learn throughout the story that actually it's because their mother is in a sanitarium uh hospital not too far away like about three three hours away by walking indeed everyone's walking or uh bicycling or um there's a couple of little trucks going by but it's incredibly rural there's rice paddies all over the place um the girl they come to this new this new little house that they're moving into and there's uh there's soot soot gremlins little puff little black puffs with eyeballs who are kind of wandering around um and oh, it's a gorgeous film about you know kind of to these two little girls dealing with the fact that their mother is ill and like you know will she live that is kind of one of these questions throughout the thing and indeed there's a certain point where they think oh my god she's got a cold again is she gonna die uh and uh you know Mai is like four and Satsuki is I think eight or something she's gone off she goes off to school during the day and um Mai gets get, gets taken care of by a, an older woman next door that, who they call grandmother um and um they meet uh, kind of the, the forest spirits and one of them that they meet um underneath this gigantic like giant of a tree it's like it's just this giant it's just amazingly gig just enormous. I we thought it was a hill when the first time we saw it. Uh is uh Tortoro. Tortoro. Uh a giant almost like kind of um giant creature with um grey you you would actually notice it's like it's like a, it looks like kind of a very stylized cat, and I would say it's a cat, except or later we get introduced to a cat bus, which looks very much like kind of like the Cheshire cat, um, and it's like Totoro has like almost like human teeth, but it's just is is a giant, is a giant, and but it's a friendly giant, very kind of soft and cuddly. Um, Mai gets kind of lost and falls asleep on him after he just cause this just enormous roar. Um, and it's just another kind of one of these gorgeous movies of uh, childhood, but also childhood tinged with like, you know, kind of real concerns about death. A father who is, who's like, you know, works at university doesn't really kind of watch over the kids that well. Mai gets completely lost and it ends up being up to Suzuki to find, find her goes to Tororo, Tororo takes her, gets her, gets her on the cat bus, and the cat bus takes her to where Mai is, and then they take, they go to the, they take him to the hospital once they found her, and, um, it's, yeah, it's just kind of like a little gorgeous, another little gorgeous tale, they have a little scene of them planting acorns, and May, May Mai just kind of looking at them and staring at them day after day, and making trying to will them to grow and then Totoro and his little pals show up and they do a dance over it and they kind of kind of just go they wave up into the sky and they start popping up and it's it's this amazing sequence where it just all grows into a gigantic tree beside them and the father seems to be unaware when they wake up in the morning there's no giant tree but there are little buds that have grown and they're just really happy about it uh and it has just that that beautiful thing of like, oh, we're in childhood. It also has um, a scene at the very beginning, which only would happen, would never happen in a North American movie, where the two young girls are having a bath with their father and everybody is completely naked. And it's not a sexual or creepy thing. It's just a natural thing, which, you know, is one of these things that makes you think of why it's not natural in our own society. But, you know, 
that that's just one of those kind of the joys of watching a foreign film where you go, yeah, why are we hung up on this? And why do I still find this slightly like, oh, <laughs> well, that was weird in a way that, you know, it was just its innocence. And indeed, in the closing credits, there's the mother having a bath with her two young daughters, and they're also completely <laughs> naked. Nothing, nothing explicit. It's just like, you know, that's, that's what's, you know, everyone is obviously naked in the scene. You're not seeing anything because it's not that, it's not gross or anything like that. Um, so, which, I mean, a part of is, is the kind of that innocence, which, ah, uh, there's some innocence that definitely North American audiences would just kind of look at this askance and go, what the hell's going on? Or at least I would. Um, I don't have kids, so I don't know anything about that one way or the other um yeah and the cat bus is just this beautiful thing uh, just on a little biographical note it was my birthday today and ja gave me a t-shirt that was uh go for a magical ride in the cat bus and it showed the cat it shows the cat bus on the front of this t-shirt which she bought for me completely not knowing that it was from this movie and uh was surprised when she saw it as we watched this movie tonight so that was a delightful little birthday gift to both of us. Uh, so yeah, that was good, good fun. Another, another Miyazaki movie. Um, actually, I'd seen it before, but another Miyazaki movie we've ticked off that we've watched together that we really liked. So we'll, I will report back in with a couple more before we lose our Netflix. We we um, uh, step off the fifteen dollars a month train and. Uh, just probably shrink down to just watching stuff on our Amazon thing, which we already get because we're it's bundled with our Amazon, which is, you know, all the economics that people have to have to kind of decide in this great age of streaming. It's like, oh, so many services you could sign up for, uh, except you can't really afford that and also have your basic cable as well on top of that with your internet and all that other stuff. So got to make some decisions. And before, before that, Hold the plug on the 18th. We'll uh, we'll watch as much as we can as we want to see on Netflix, and then go from there. Which probably means, ironically, in the next little while, I'll watch more movies than I have for the last you know year, where I haven't really watched much on Netflix. It's funny how suddenly when you have a have a uh, deadline, you just want to suddenly suddenly you start using something, whereas before you didn't. All right, more videos later.